Blush is power, my friends. What is up, you guys? Welcome back. So today we're gonna be doing a full face of zero waste beauty. We're going to also be chatting through some of my thoughts and some things that have been rolling around in my brain lately about sustainability as it pertains to beauty and beauty consumption and the beauty industry and marketing and all that stuff. I have had my brain on this a lot since we began 2020. You guys seemed to really, really enjoy my declutter, on, honestly, as much as I did. I got so much out of that and I'm so glad that you guys did too. I am shocked <laughs> that so many people were willing to watch a video that was over an hour long of just my hands. But don't worry guys, there will be more like that because like I said, I am decluttering my entire life. But today we're going to go back to makeup for a video. So today we're going to be featuring a couple of new products that I have gotten in the mail recently from uh, Elate Cosmetics. They were kind enough to send a few more things along for me to try that I'm really excited to share with you guys. And also some stuff from Lila B as well as some things that are already in my collection. And we'll talk about some brands that I might not put on my face, but that still have really good sustainability practices. And what I've been doing lately in my routine to start kind of rethinking my footprint. So guys, Without further ado, let's go ahead and jump in. If you're sitting there like, Kaki, why is your face red? <laughs> Funny story. So I bought this little thing on Kiki G's recommendation. She texted me and she was like, what kind of microphone do you use? And I was like, how do you white balance your videos? Because I swear that is like my biggest personal critique when I'm watching any of my own videos back. I'm like, why am I so pink? Why am I so yellow? Why am I so blue? You might think that it's a stylistic choice. It's not, it's just my eyes playing tricks on me and then something happens also when I upload them. Anyway, this is called a gray card and it is supposed to help you white balance your videos before you start shooting. So hopefully this looks a little bit better than usual. If it doesn't, I'm sorry. But um, as it turns out, it comes packed like this inside of a little, honestly, like booby trapped container. It goes in there, which is really, really great for people who are on the go, but <laughs> I'm not on the go. I'm gonna leave it unfolded because as soon as I pulled it out of its little sheath, it exploded in my face <laughs> and it popped me right into the eye. Little uh, behind the scenes for you guys. That's why my face is red. So let's put on some foundation. I have the Elate Cosmetics Uplift Full Tint foundation here in the shade UN1. And we're gonna start with that. I have all my sunscreen and skincare and stuff on my face right now, but I don't have a primer. I've actually found that this doesn't work as beautifully with a primer. It just kind of grabs a little bit too much. So I'm just going to be grabbing a little bit out of here with the adorable little spatula that I got from my RMS foundation. So I retained this as kind of a consolation prize. And before we start talking about like the chatty portion of this video, I do want to in depth kind of talk to you guys about this foundation because it's kind of blowing my mind. I'm not gonna lie. It feels cooling when you put it on your face for one thing, and you don't have to put on very much. It is technically marketed, I guess, as their like higher coverage foundation versus the one that I tried in my first Elate video. But I think you can use it kind of like the Westman Atelier. You know, you can use it to just kind of build in certain spots selectively, and it doesn't ever show like a line of demarcation. It just blends directly into the rest of your skin. So if you have like blemishes or just a red spot because <laughs> something just punched you in the face, hopefully nothing punched you in the face. Moving on. Anything that you just kind of want to camouflage but you don't feel like putting on like a full, full face and looking like toddlers and tiaras when you're done. This is one of those foundations and it's not that expensive. It lasts a year, which is awesome. And you get 30 grams. I guess that's one ounce uh, for like 30, I wanna say $32. It's way better price-wise than the Westman Atelier. And there are no dimethicones or silicones or anything in this. And it still performs really, really beautifully. Like, I don't know, the term that I've started using is a real makeup. Like it just performs like real makeup. I talk about things being forgettable when we're talking about a complexion product. It doesn't necessarily need to blow my mind, but it needs to be different enough that there was a point in making it. And I do kind of have just this like, cluster of gray area in my mental encyclopedia of complexion products that's like, these all sorta did the same thing. And that's kind of what I was talking about in my declutter when I say something's forgettable. It doesn't mean that it's bad, it just means that like, it didn't really blow my mind enough to be memorable. And for that reason, I feel like it's my responsibility to tell you guys like, this isn't something that I necessarily recommend spending your money on because your money is important. So, um, 
high. I really, like, I didn't even use the full amount that I pulled out of there. And I think that that's enough. Like, I think that I'm done. And I do want to talk about the, like, what it means to be sustainable or to be zero waste because every company kind of has their own take on it. So for example, Elate puts all of their stuff in uh, bamboo and recyclable materials and things like that. And they're actually featured on, you know, zero waste websites and things like that because they're kind of coming at it from that angle. They're like, are you a zero waste person? <laughs> are you someone who's very focused on the environment and things like that? Let me sell you some makeup versus the companies that are out there that are coming from a performance angle and just happen to be zero waste like Aether. So we're going to do a little bit of like I look today with Aether just so that we can use them. But they are a line that like she's made the effort to not include a mirror and she puts the elastic on there so it doesn't have a magnet and things like that so that it's a completely recyclable package. And then her new lip creams are made out of recycled plastic and they are recyclable. And so like that is the zero waste uh, take from like Aether's angle. And then Lila B is really cool because even though I'm like, I always complain, I'm like, oh, they don't sell replacement pans. And I still think we should lobby them to sell replacement pans, but they not only will recycle anything from Lila B that you buy, but they will recycle anything that you buy apparently. I don't know, I'm gonna go into like detail about what my like most recent practices have been and like my mindset, but how insane is that? Like, are they serious? Like they'll send you a prepaid like packaged box and you can send your empties and they will find a way to recycle any of them for free. Like, why is that not being like broadcast from the rooftops? Why is that not on billboards? Like, what are we doing? Anyway, I am going to go in with this Be Lovely Divine Duo Lip and Cheek. They sent this to me and it just did done and cutest little thing, but girlfriend packs a punch, okay? That is a very, very pigmented, beautiful kind of dusty rose, almost to a clay color for me, which is good. It means it kind of like warms my skin up, but it is pretty warm. So I'm going to go in with a dampened sponge on this guy. Just get that started on my cheeks. I'm also going to go in with Kiki's palette because those are aluminum little pans that you buy and it is in a completely like reusable palette. So I think that that's a really interesting way to kind of attack the problem too, especially when you are going through makeup pretty quickly to just eliminate the packaging element of it is really, really smart. And I know that I'm gonna get a lot of comments from people who are like, that's not technically zero waste, you know? And like everybody's gonna have like more or less strict definitions of what counts as zero waste. I think that what really counts is that we have a way of closing the loop on our footprint of our consumption. As humans, we're gonna consume and that totally sucks. And we have to start rethinking the action of throwing something into a garbage can, of just thinking, now it's gone. Now it's out of my life. It's someone else's problem now. Someone else will take care of this because someone else will take care of this it usually means that they dug a hole in the ground and they're just dumping your trash in there to rot forever. And like, that's, we can do better. <laughs> We can do better than that as individuals. And honestly, like it needs to influence us on like a cultural level and become normal in America, the way that it's normal in a lot of countries to take your recycling to the recycling center every evening or to compost more or to just not even have a proper like garbage can because you have figured out how to, you know, stop buying things that make that kind of waste, etc. So at my house, you know, we do have a composter and we compost all of our like veggies and our, uh, our paper towels and things like that that you can't technically recycle. But uh, we also do recycle and and I just, and now that I know about the Lila B thing, I may have made a grave misjudgment, but yesterday, day before yesterday maybe, I don't know, I was just looking down the barrel of all of the beauty that I'm kind of purging, right? The stuff that's expired. I actually took a whole bag of my giveaway stuff to my friend Jordan yesterday, and she and her roommates kept all of it, <laughs> which is awesome. And I was like, are you actually gonna use all of this? And she was like, if I don't, I work with a bunch of girls and they would be so excited to have this stuff. And so that 
is awesome. That made me feel really good. Kind of like leaving her house, leaving, you know, empty handed and being like, this is going to people who are going to appreciate it. So this is the, uh, the contour from Kiki's palette. Um, that it's, sorry, it's the salt New York palette. If you're new here, Kiki is just a friend of mine, a dear, lovely, wonderful person that you should definitely follow on all of her social media channels because she's just an absolute unabashed delight and a blessing on this earth. Um, but, uh, her products, the Cream Tint Pro and the Salt New York palette, which she just teased, she's coming out with like a four pan, like mini palette, awesome. But anyway, I spent $231 on a TerraCycle box. <laughs> the big boy, the really, really big one. And I just kind of wanted to do it as like an experiment to kind of chronicle it and be like, you know, how long does it take to fill this up and how much makeup will actually fit in here? And is it practical to expect as a regular beauty consumer to be able to maybe like, you know, use one of the like $108 ones for like a year, you know? And like, that's your year's worth of stuff because, okay, if you're unfamiliar with TerraCycle, TerraCycle is a company that will recycle anything. That is their thing is they're like, look, China isn't buying, I don't, they didn't say this, but like, this is my logic. China's not buying our recyclables anymore. That was what we used to do for recycling. It, and then that was like, what we counted is like, oh, okay. Like we did that. It's in like reuse now, not necessarily. So we would pack it into these cubes and we would ship it off to China, which is a hilariously, absurdly large loop anyway. Like we, if we can shrink that loop in any way, think of all of the like fossil fuel savings, but also they didn't take or buy a lot of different kinds of plastic. You know, there are the different numbers on the bottoms of your different recyclables and they didn't take everything. They mostly took clear plastic, sometimes the white plastic. And then that colored plastic, not only does it not get recycled, it most of the time ends up in oceans. And I personally have just started to realize that like this job choice that I have made is something that like, I think is gonna be on the wrong side of history at some point. And we need to start to shift the narrative towards consuming more consciously from the onset, from the very beginning, from the decision to buy a product, not thinking about it as, I wanna buy this because it's new and shiny. Now, what do I do with it? I just realized I didn't even put on any kind of concealer. A, I'm just jabbering my face off, but B, that foundation just has such a lovely little like finish to it and a nice coverage level that I didn't even notice. But I'm gonna go in with the Elate Beauty Concealer. This is actually more of a complexion color for me than like a brightening color, which I actually really like because it just has a little bit more intense uh, coverage without it making me look like I've got more makeup on. One of my unlearned things this year has been unlearning the, you know, YouTube way of doing makeup and just everything always looking a little bit unreal. I think in some cases, I just want to look like I'm not wearing makeup <laughs> more so than looking like better, <laughs> I guess. I don't know, I, I had like this big zit right here and I just went a few days where all I did was just cover that zit. <laughs> I just used a little bit of like a very like true to my skin tone concealer and I used a brush to kind of blend over it and I didn't wear any other makeup and I was like, God, I feel so confident. I feel so pretty looking in the mirror and just having covered that blemish rather than putting on a whole face of makeup to like, I don't know, distract from it or something. So I'm gonna use a little bit of that on a brush. This is a Sigma E40 tapered blending brush, but I'm using it for concealer because it's just got kind of a light feathery tip to it. And so it'll help kind of like blend concealer where I want it. Another really cute little bamboo zero waste product here. This just, it's just in glass with a bamboo lid. And I'm not really sure if their whole company is uh, no waste because they make eyelashes, but they do give back in huge ways. And these particular products are, you know, completely recyclable and cle completely like this is compostable. So this is Venix Organics. And this is, I think one of the first products that they've come out with that isn't lashes. It's, it's a highlighter and I think it has grapeseed oil in it. And so it does, have that kind of fry oil smell to it, but they're still really beautiful. And I've been meaning to use them on camera because they're very, very pretty. And as far as like cream highlights go, they're actually a lot more uh, pigmented and punchy, I feel like, than um, some of the other cream highlights that I've used that tend to be kind of either stiff or gooey. These are right in the middle. So that is a uh, wedding ring and K color. Wedding ring is a little bit warmer and K color has a little bit more of like a silver shift, but like, I honestly think once you get that on your face, you're probably not gonna notice the difference one way or the other. Um, they're both absolutely beautiful. So let's go in with K color here. 
And I'm just going to tap that. In fact, I'm gonna use a sponge because this is very, very pigmented. And so I want it to get really nicely diffused so that it just looks like a texture on my skin more so than like a product. I think putting makeup on like this is really fun. Like this is actually my favorite way to do it. It's like, it's not editorial in the sense that it's like in a magazine, it's editorial in the sense that like, you just kind of look at your face differently and say like, okay, like where do I want to add? Not where do I want to cover up? What do I want to fix? It's like, what do I want to add? You know? Ooh, yes. Put that down a little bit more on the cheeks, on the chin, on the nose. Oh, I love that actually. That's so pretty. Cause it's just really like, I don't know. It's just really natural looking. Very pretty. Like those a lot. Like those a lot. I think that we need more blush. What do you guys think? Um, I'm going to go in with this. I believe this is the coral shade from Kiki's palette. She used this in her most recent video. And I was like, mm, I need to get back into that shade. That shade is real good. Gonna just get get a little heavy right at the pop on the cheeks there. These do have dimethicone in them. And so they go on the face really, really, really lightweight. I'm not opposed to dimethicone. It's just something to be aware of, but these are like professional makeup products. And so I feel like that's the selling point to me about them is just that they go on and they're not really meant to look like makeup. They're meant to look like face, enhancement on camera. You know, it's like, it's just meant to make you look more like you. These looks never look good on camera, by the way, because as soon as you're kind of shiny, you don't really absorb the light the same way and you don't look like flawless the way that you're used to seeing on YouTube. And so I do feel like that's probably why a lot of YouTubers don't do cream looks on camera is just because they don't shoot well underneath lights, but you guys know better. Y'all, y'all know, you know that this looks better in real life. It looks more like skin. All right, I'm gonna go in with a little bit of the Aether Supernova Crushed Diamond Highlighter. This is in pure diamond dust. Um, and I'm just going to go in with that kind of selectively over some spots. This is actually how I prefer to apply this is with my fingers because it's sort of like the bounce and blur from uh, Bare Minerals, the way that it like is, it's a powder, but it's almost creamy. You know, it has this consistency to it that is all most a cream. And that is why I feel like it is so versatile and beautiful, but it does have a little bit of a learning curve. Like I watched Alana Davison put it on and she didn't really like it because she A has like textured skin and B she put on quite a bit. And I feel like it, I mean, it, there was no arguing with the fact that it did accentuate texture. Um, but you know, I, that's why, I don't know. I just put on so much less. I just have a completely different way of putting on highlighter than that. So yes, very lovely complexion situation. And I didn't bronze at all. It was just, contour and this really pretty Lila B, B lovely Divine Duo lip and cheek. So I do have a lip from Lila B, so I will be using that today. So I'm just kind of flying by the seat of my pants here. I do have a lot of products that kind of fall into this category, but at the risk of this like looking kind of odd, I am going to go in with a little bit of the Aether Beauty Rose Quartz palette and just do a little bit of, you know, enhancement on my eyes here while we talk a little bit more about this. So where I kind of arrived, because I do, I just, I spend so much time thinking about my responsibility as an influencer and like setting a really good example for people that's sustainable. I think that like sustainability, not like environmental sustainability, but sustainability of what my channel is and like whether I can maintain that going forward is always on my mind because you as a subscriber want to subscribe to a channel that you know what to expect from me. You know, you want to know that you can come back to my channel and get a certain type of thing. That's why you subscribe. And so when I change the game or change the narrative up on you, like that's bad for everybody. Like you get disappointed because it's not the content you expected. And I get disappointed because people leave or they don't watch. And so that's always been the challenge of YouTube is how to grow within your channel without like alienating people. And you know, if that is something that's like, you're kind of rebranding your content or something like that, it's always risky. But all of that said, I don't feel like that is as risky right now because I feel like the general population is feeling this kind of impending pressure of needing to make less waste. I don't want to assume anything, but like, I definitely feel a responsibility on an individual level that our institutions, I'm not going to get political here, but our institutions are motivated by money and they're just not going to prioritize this unless we prioritize it. 
we have to make it something that we choose to vote with our dollar on or they're never going to listen. They're never going to listen. They're only going to listen to what keeps making them money. And so that means that we have to decide for ourselves at the get go, like from the beginning of our search for a new product, the same way that I do with clothes or anything like that. Like this is something that I applied to my wardrobe this past season and I cannot wait to share with you guys. Again, I just wanted to do a makeup video, but I'm so excited to share my capsule wardrobe with you guys and like how I use it. I just feel like the new year is a, a really positive time for reflection and a time to kind of like take a step back from yourself. Don't judge, but just make some decisions. Oh, I just love these shades. I love them so much. Look at them just like right on top of cream. Just chilling, no problem. So essentially applying that mindset to makeup, I think is the next step for this industry. We have to start thinking as a collective about where we're buying from, what companies we're buying from, and whether they also have taken the responsibility on the front end to make sure that it is easier for us to have a smaller loop and a smaller footprint. So if you go on the TerraCycle website, they have a bunch of programs that are really, really cool for a bunch of different brands. Granted, like I said, this whole Lila B thing is like awesome news to me. I had no idea that like any company would just take all your trash <laughs> and do something responsible with it. I think that like if, if something is made really, really inconsiderately at the very, very bottom of the barrel, like these companies do end up having to incinerate them. I'm not totally sure, but like I think that there still are things that just cannot be recycled and they do have to incinerate them. But just to know that these companies are doing the best that they can, you know, and that they have your same kind of ethics and priorities in mind um, about doing something more responsible with it. Ooh, uh, that's a little pinker than I thought that it was going to be. I don't know about that. But if you kind of go on that website, you can, I mean, there are hundreds of them guys, hundreds of these brands that have recycling programs in place already. Sorry, I, I literally can't concentrate while I'm doing this apparently. I'm gonna do my brows really quickly and uh, and maybe some eyeliner and I'll be right back. I just don't have like zero waste options for that. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna be right back. So we have a couple more products that I wanna use today. One is the mascara from Elite Cosmetics. This is in a little bamboo tube. Another company that does a great job that I just don't have any new stuff from, like here to try as uh, CureWise, you know, they're really, really awesome uh, about making everything, you know, in these completely reusable containers with just replaceable pans. It's a very, very expensive product line, but the replacement pans are less expensive than, you know, the one-time purchase of the, you know, the little carrier compacts. I have used this uh, mascara, by the way, before, and it actually rinses really clean. It's not a tubing mascara, but uh, the way that it does rinse off, it doesn't give me a whole bunch of like, you know, I don't have to rub my eyes. It just comes off in the shower. And I don't want to say like, oh, I'm going to go be perfect. I think that that is what ends up crippling us with any of these efforts. It's just like Shelby says on her channel, Shell Bizzle, which you should watch if you're interested in like zero waste stuff. You know, it's a quote, but basically like, you know, you cannot do all the good the world needs, but the world needs all the good you can do kind of thing. You know, it's, it takes a village, but I, I do think that it is the kind of thing that sort of cripples these sorts of movements. It's just that people tend to backbite and they tend to um, tell people that they're not doing a good enough job of being a conservationist. They come for them and they, you know, they say that there's a label on a video or a label on a channel or something and then they say well you're not that you're not doing a good job you're not setting an example you know you're doing it wrong and I think that that is like the worst possible fate for something like this and it's because everybody's in competition to be perfect and if we can just refrain from that and do the best that we can well I mean that's leaps and bounds better than we're doing right now or that we were than we were doing you know when I was a kid for example I have one more product to try here and that is the Be Elegant Lovingly Lip Tinted Lip Oil from Lila B. And it comes with this giant, like giant doe foot applicator. And it's a little interesting because it like doesn't want to really spread around that much. I'm not really sure, but uh, it's a gorgeous color. Look at that. Oh. I think I need to go in with my finger. It's just a weird little applicator. Weird. We're probably looking at it like khaki. It's just an applicator, but like there's something about the formula and that applicator that just like don't really go together. Oh, though, that color, it's a little orange, actually, compared to everything else that I have on my face right now. That's, huh. I guess we'll have to bring a little bit of orange 
into my eyes. That's what we'll do. Go into my Solstice palette for that. So yeah, that doesn't necessarily mean that you have to go and like only buy from brands that claim to be zero waste and all this stuff. Like that's not my point. I definitely think that there's a difference between shopping conscious and shopping consciously. They're both good. You know, shopping conscious being only shopping from brands that already do the legwork for you and make sure that everything's made in a really ethical and sustainable way. And then there's the mindset of shopping where you can afford to shop, but shopping for quality and shopping for things that you're going to get the most use out of and not buying more just because it's cheaper. Does that make sense? I think that shopping conscious sometimes has the backfired effect of not making us do the mental legwork of thinking about our actual shopping habits. It just excuses our shopping habits because we're shopping at places that are doing things in a responsible way, but it's not really making us think harder about the rate at which we're consuming. Whereas I truly believe that it is just as good. I mean, granted doing both is great, but it's just as good and far more cost effective to shop the best that you can and buy the things that are the best quality that you can afford, but doing so in a way that you are only buying the things that you really need and will get use out of. Like, I think that we need to let ourselves off the hook a little bit about the fact that the industry just isn't there yet in the sense of making things that are beautiful, sustainable, and affordable. We are going to end up having to pay more for those things in the long run. I think that like we have to kind of like recalibrate our understanding of what we're willing to pay for something when we are buying fewer and better of things. However, most of the stuff that's out there right now is actually, I feel like because there's not a supply chain for it, we're end up ending up paying like more overhead for that stuff. So yes, you know, do that when you can, absolutely. And I even think that like buying designer or buying luxury or anything like that from certain designers, not all of them, but buying one of something that's going to last you a decade versus buying something that's going to last you a year. It's actually like a more sustainable act to commit, even if it's not necessarily a company that has like really strong values, if that makes sense, than going and buying from a company that, you know, you're just not going to love what you got. Cause you wanna be excited about the things that you use and about the things that you wear. And there's no replacement for that. You can't just convince yourself to like something because it was the right thing to buy, you know? Okay, Um, I did the best that I could on that lip and I just don't think that it's working. <laughs> uh, no. We got warmth, we did it, and I just don't like it. I'm just gonna throw in a little bit of balm here. This is not a zero waste product. This is the Kosas, but I'm almost done with it. <laughs> it's like kind of crazy when I finish a product. Like you have to admit that's pretty impressive. I will give you guys my final thoughts on these things. Um, this foundation is incredible. I've worn it with powder and it makes for like a full day wear, beautiful airbrushed situation that you can just use seamlessly with all of your other products. It doesn't behave strangely. You don't have to do anything weird to accommodate like the natural ingredients. It's awesome. This concealer we've already talked about. I do think that it's kind of a little bit too deep for me, but it works as like a nice complexion match. I really, really like these highlighters. I think they're beautiful. And I think the combination of this with the Aether is like chef's kiss. Oh, I forgot to use this. Oops, I meant to use this. This is the Universal Cream in Bliss from Elate. They sent this to me and it is in this really pretty kind of like rosy rusty color. It might warm my complexion up. Let's put on more blush. Why not? Wow. Am I wrong? That's kind of pulling things together. You guys were sitting there like, Khaki, that wasn't enough blush. You were right. <laughs> blush is power, my friends. Obviously I'm obsessed with the Aether Beauty palettes. That's like not a secret here on my channel. And of course I'm also obsessed with Kiki's palette, which is like so sneaky sustainable because this is definitely sold as like a very like, you know, luxury, indulgent. There's absolutely no compromise that you feel when you're using these products. And at the same time, you're just like, wait, this is so simple. This is actually really brilliant. And then the mascara I like, if you are looking for a very, very natural mascara, 
uh, natural looking and also natural ingredients, but it does have just a normal wash off. It's not like waterproof or anything. And um, this is a beautiful formula. I would like to try it in like a more rosy tone. I know that this nude is probably meant to be very like universal, but at my palest, it actually just doesn't really live on my face all that naturally. It looks really, really warm. So um, yeah, I might try this again when I'm like tanner or use uh, a lip liner with it. I just didn't want to like pull anything out that wasn't like playing by the rules of the video today. But I do really like it. I love the formula. I want to keep trying it, just not with this face of makeup. So moral of the story, guys, as I move forward on my channel, I want you guys to know that my mindset is going to be more around focusing on the entire life cycle of a product. And please understand that when you see me throw something away, I have a big TerraCycle box that's sitting right there that I paid a lot of money for. I'm taking it very, very seriously. The products are not going to go in a landfill, period. And like that's incredibly important to me. And I also take those steps in other places in my life. And I'm going to use those kind of fundamentals to steer me in my future purchases as well, the things that I want to test and try for you guys. Does that mean that we're going to be like perfect, perfect, perfect? No, because I don't want to set an example of perfection. Do you need to be perfect? No, what we all need to be doing is just a little bit more <laughs> as a society and it needs to become normal. And that is the reason that using this platform that I have in this beautiful community that we have all built together, it is something that's so important to me to disseminate knowledge and to make things better. I hope that you guys enjoyed this. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Leave below in a comment, please, any brands that you know of that you can recommend to people that you have used and you know to perform well uh, that have either great programs for recycling and for closing their own loop or for uh, actual zero waste packaging and you know you can just recycle them through your normal like recycling channels. I want to know that stuff, not just so that I can buy it, but I want you guys to be able to tell one another as well, because obviously I don't own everything that's out there and I don't want to own everything that's out there. So that would be a really, really great thing to share down below. I hope that you will. And if this is my first video of yours that you are watching, I hope that you will subscribe, ring the little notification bell so you know when I upload. Thank you guys so much for watching. I love you guys so, so much. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.